In this video, we'll be talking about choking on the banjo. So we don't mean choking in the sense like in a baseball game where the batter comes up, the bases are loaded, bottom of the ninth, two outs, all he needs to do is hit in one of those guys to win the game for the team. And of course he swings and misses strike three, he's out. In reference to banjo playing, choking is actually used to describe bending a note to where you get two different pitches, you get the original pitch, bend the note, but it's a choke because notice the note is gone. So it's like, because we have no sustain on the banjo, but that's it, we're bending strings. Here's the most common choke lick you hear on the banjo. It was a favorite of Ralph Stanley's and he got it from Earl Scruggs and it uses that foggy mountain roll. And I'm bending the 10th fret note while I play the Foggy Mountain Roll, and each time I hit that 10th fret, I bend the note. To get a good sounding choke, you'll want to have your fingers arched, as if you're playing a nice clean note, and then push up, and your finger flattens out as you push up, and you'll notice that by having two fingers here, the back of it catches the next string to where it doesn't make any sound. Earl quite often played this without hitting the middle finger after the first bend. You've heard this lick played in backup. Rolling my sweet baby's arm. The cool thing about this Foggy Mountain Choke Lick is that it works against your G, C, and D chords. When you see Earl perform this choke, he often is using just one finger and sometimes it's his first finger. And other times he uses his second finger, but again, just one finger. Whereas I'm a fan of putting at least two fingers down with the other finger right behind it on the string to help control that bend. You'll feel like you have a lot more control over it with the single finger. You run the risk of losing it. Realize that when you're bending this 10th fret, you're actually trying to bend it up to the pitch of the 11th fret. This will make your choke sound much better if it's actually in tune. So you're approaching the sound of the 11th fret right as you get to the height of the choke. It's just a bluesy way of playing the same thing. So they've marked that choke as a C, C standing for choke with a one after it, meaning that it's the full choke as far as Earl's concerned. Because he never did do a bend that was over uh, a half step, one fret. Whereas if you hear Sonny Osborne when he does his steel guitar bend, he's actually bending that note the equivalent of two frets from 10 to 12. So, not the best way to mark it, but that's what you'll see in Earl's book. C1 for this half step, one fret, choke. Another bend that Earl uses is at fret 11. But this time he's not worried about bending it all the way to the pitch of the next note. He just pushes it just a little bit, and they refer to this in the book as a half choke. And here's what that famous ending would sound like. When I play Foggy Mountain Special, I actually play it to where the first bend will be a full choke and the second bend will be a half choke.
another place you'll hear that 11th fret choke is when you're holding this E minor shape like in Cumberland Gap or Sally Gooden. Each time you hit the 11th fret you give it a slight little push but when you play the 10th fret just keep it straight. There's a nice tag lick that plays out of this position, again using a half choke at the 11th fret. And the nice thing about this lick, realizing that that is a G note right there, move that up to where your first finger plays a C note and you can play the lick exactly the same. We'll give you a nice ending for C. Sometimes the choke can be used to create added tension. If you hold your first finger on the fifth fret, you have a G note. You would also have a G note on the eighth fret over here. But instead of hitting those together, hit the seventh fret, bend into it on the second string. You'll sound like the Jimi Hendrix of banjo players. While theoretically any note could be bent, realize you're trying to bend notes that still sound in tune with the song. So often it's used as a bluesy effect. These fret 10 and 11 bends are the most common ones that you'll hear. But sometimes down here at the third fret on the second string, especially if you're in the key of G and you hear an F chord, going back to the G, you'll hear a little push on the third fret. Again, a half choke. Here's another little lick that does that. 